Hello students! <clears throat> in this video I will show you how to add modes to your game. What I mean by modes is uh, an introduction mode, a normal play mode, and a game over mode. Um, we're going to use this simple click counter that we made earlier as an example. Right now what happens when you run it is it runs and then whenever I click it will count the clicks. What I'd like to do to make this simple toy into a simple game is to have an introductory screen which says welcome to the click game when you press the space bar the game will begin um, and then when you press the space bar it will enter this mode where I'll click and then after a certain amount of time um, it'll enter a mode where the game is over and it will tell me how fast I was able to click okay let's do it so the key to having different modes is I have to remember what mode is my game in my program has to keep track of that so I'm going to create an integer called mode, which starts at 0. Um, we could have a code where 0 means intro screen, and 1 means normal play, and 2 means game has ended. Something like that. And then what we'll do is, inside draw, we want different things to happen depending on what mode we're in. So we can do something like this. We can say if mode equals zero then we'll do one set of things else if mode equals one then we'll do the normal play things otherwise if mode equals two we'll do the game over things so right now this is what we wanted to have happen during normal play so I'll paste that into here so mode zero this is what to do for the intro screen this is what to do for normal play and then this is what to do when the game is over <clears throat> alright so this is the the outline of the kind of organization that we want um, I'm imagining that you might want a lot of stuff to happen inside normal play or in any of these places so I don't want my draw method to get all cluttered up here so I'm gonna show you a nicer way of organizing it right now first of all when I say if mode equals zero I had to tell you what zero means because there's nothing about zero that makes you guess that it's the intro screen that's why I wrote this comment here a better thing to do is at the top let's define some variables um, we'll say int intro equals zero int normal play equals one and game over equals two so now instead of using the numbers zero one and two I can use these variables and it makes it a lot easier to read so I can say intro here so if mode equals intro oops and then here I can say if mode equals normal play and then here I can say if mode equals game over. So already this is easier to read. Um, but instead of having like 20 lines of code inside this if statement, I'm going to create a method. And the method is going to get called for each of the different modes. So if the mode is intro, I want to say um, do intro mode. And if I'm going to cut this and if the mode is normal play I'm gonna say do normal play and if the mode is game over I'll say do game over so the reason I have compile time errors here is because I haven't actually created these methods yet so underneath draw let's create each one these are static methods uh, sorry these are void methods because I am not returning any information back I'm just doing something so do intro mode and then public static void do normal play and public static void do game over <coughs> alright right now I'm leaving these empty so when it does the intro mode it'll jump down here but then I don't have any code in there so it's not actually going to do anything um, take note when you are creating your methods make sure that you have a closing brace and an opening brace for each method and that the next method comes after that um, don't try and create the methods inside of each other so I'm now going to paste the code that used to be inside normal play and I'm going to paste it inside 
um, this method. Why does it not like this? Oh, because I didn't make these static. Okay. Sorry, let's not make these static. You don't know what static means yet. Um, but let's not worry about it. All right, cool. So what do I want it to do in the intro mode? I think I just want it to display some text. So I'll say fill font color, and then I'll have text. Let's make a, let's make a string for this. Because I'm realizing my text is kind of long. So I'll say press space to begin. Click as fast as you can. And now I want to use the text display command. And I'm going to display my intro text. And I'm going to display it at maybe 250 by 300. So that's the X and Y positions where I want to display it. Let's run it so far and see what it looks like. So it's displaying my introductory text. Notice that as I click, nothing else is happening. So this code in here that's displaying my number of clicks, this is not running because what's happening is the draw loop is running. But because mode starts out at 0 up here, it's this is returning true because mode is always equal to 0. And it's just running this method over and over and over again because these ones aren't true. And what's happening in do intro mode is it's just displaying that intro text. All right, um, clearly I want to back this up a little bit. So let's make it at 150. I'm going to put in a new line character. That's what the backslash n is. And I'll back it up even a little bit further. OK, so that looks OK. Welcome, press space to begin, click as fast as you can. If you wanted to, you could use the background command here with an image that you'd created to have a nice splash image uh, for your background. I'm not going to do that. You can do that. All right, well, so I just said press space to begin. So I want to see if they press space. So here I'm still inside do intro mode. I want to say if key pressed and if key code Oh, no, so I'm sorry, space is not a special key. Space is a normal key. So if key equals space, then I want to set mode to be 1. And all that's doing is I'm saying as long as I'm running the intro mode and I press a key, if the key was space, I'm going to stop mode being 0. You know what? I can actually set mode to normal play. So I can say assign the normal play code to be our current mode. And then the next time we go through the draw loop, mode is not going to be intro anymore. Now it's going to be normal play, and it will do whatever's in here. So let's see. Here I'm running. I press space. And now you see I've switched modes. All right. Um, so now I want it to run normal play for a certain amount of time and then switch to game over mode. So let's do this. I'm going to have another variable up here called timer. And it's going to start at 0. And right when I switch to normal play, I'm going to set my timer. Oh, actually, let's not do that. Sorry, my timer is already set. Right when I switch to normal play, I'm going to want to do this. I'll say timer equals timer plus 1. So I'm adding to the timer. And as long every time I call this method, time is going to go up by 1. I'm going to say if timer is bigger than, let's say, 100, then I'll set the mode to be game over. So now, after this method runs 100 times, timer will be bigger than 100, and I'll switch the game modes automatically. Let's see if it works. I'm running it. I press space. I'm clicking as fast as I can. Oh, and you see it switched. I was only able to get 11 clicks. All right. So let's go to game over. In the game over screen, I want to just display how they did. So I'm going to display you got num clicks. And I'm going to display that at 100, 300. 
All right, here we are. So I press space, I click, 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 and now it says you got 14. The problem is as I click in the game over screen, it's still going up. So let's fix that. Maybe we should say game over, that's gonna make it clearer. Game over, you got this many clicks. Okay, why is it continuing to go up? It's because mouse clicked runs no matter what mode I'm in. So it doesn't know that it's not supposed to add to my variable unless I'm in the normal play mode. So let's add an if statement. If mode equals normal play, then I'll add one. Otherwise, I'm never gonna add one. So now, mouse clicked is gonna run whenever I click the mouse, but before I add to the number of times I've clicked, I'm gonna check to make sure I'm in normal play mode. Otherwise, I'm not gonna do anything. All right, let's try it again. Space. I got 13 clicks. Okay, and we could press space again to reset the game. Let's do that. <coughs> so here in game over mode, I'm gonna say hit space to play again. And I'm gonna display that at maybe 200, 300. Let's see what that looks like. Oops, that is displaying. Oops, I forgot. I want to make the Y coordinate be larger, not the X coordinate. Okay. Take two. Hit space to play again. Okay, it's weird to have a colon there. So obviously this looks terrible, um, but you can worry about the aesthetics of it afterwards. I just want to show you a good way of organizing all of your code. All right, well, how are we going to make it start over if they hit space? We're in game over method here. Oh, sorry, we're in the game over method. So if I say if key pressed <coughs> and if key equals space, now if they're pressing space, I want to switch it back to normal play. The problem is you got to think carefully about what variables need to change. If I switch back to normal play mode, my num clicks variable is still equal to whatever it was before. So if you want to reset the game, you have to reset all of the variables that you might need. So I'm going to set num clicks back to zero. And what else do I need to reset? Let's see, normal play, aha, timer. Timer was going up by one every time. So when it left normal play, timer was equal to 100. So I'm also going to need to reset timer back to zero. This is very important when you design your own games. After you finish, you, you've written your code, you think it's going to work, before you press that play button, stop and think, what's going to happen next? Do I need to change anything else? Um, only by thinking about those things is your code going to run bug free. All right, so here we go. I'm clicking. I got 12 clicks. I'll hit space. Oh, I got 12 clicks. Now I'm really going to do it. Oh yeah, I got 15. All right, um, this has been our tutorial about how to make different modes. You can extend the same technique to add levels if you want. So um, instead of an intro and a normal play and a game over, you could have an intro and level one and level two and level three and level four. And then inside draw, you could have the mode tell you which method do you go to for different levels. Um, and the only thing to be careful of is when you go from level one to level two, you need to set up all of the variables for level two before you run the level two method. You can't set up the variables at the top of the level two method because remember the level two method is going to be running all the time. So you got to set up everything before you ever start level two. Okay. I think that is all. I wish you luck.